Hi, so today I'm going to talk about why I prefer mixing in Logic rather than Pro Tools and specifically why I think Logic is better in terms of speed, efficiency and fatigue in long mixing sessions um, when you're doing it professionally. Um, now, just want to start out by saying this video is not intended to trash Pro Tools in any way. I think it's an amazing DAW. I use it every day. Uh, I've been using it for more years than I can count and I've mixed many, many albums and it. it's fantastic. And I think it still has the edge when it comes to tracking lots of tracks at the same time. Uh, punching in on the fly, real-time monitoring of effects. Um, I think Pro Tools is, is the way to go. But when it comes to mixing, um, I actually think that Logic in recent years has made significant steps beyond Pro Tools and is now quite a lot faster uh, to mix in for the way I mix um, and a lot more efficient, a lot less mouse clicks. So I'm going to have a look at some of those differences um, and you know this is just how I mix, other people approach it differently um, but a lot of things have changed in mixing over the recent years because things have gone much more into the box. I grew up mixing in 100% analog on tape. Um, and I, you know, that's how I learned. So I, I know analog really well. I know what it's like recording to and mastering to tape. I, I spent many years doing that before moving over gradually to digital. And then as time's gone on, I've gone more and more and then went completely in the box quite a while back. Um, and in doing that, my mixing practice has changed because once you're in the box, a whole bunch of other things become available to you and other ways of mixing uh, and expectations from clients also all change. And I feel that Logic has uh, reflected those changes and moved with the times and even in being very innovative with a lot of those things. And uh, Pro Tools has not kept up in many ways. It's still uh, works the same way as it did many years, for, has done for many, many years. Um, and I'm finding it significantly slow and clunky in some areas, which is what I'll be looking at. So why am I doing this? Um, I'm not trying to make Pro Tools users feel bad. I'm a Pro Tools user. I'm going to continue to be a Pro Tools user for the foreseeable future. Um, the reason I'm doing it is because I'm hoping that if other Pro Tools users learn what's different about Logic and what advantages Logic has for what I call 21st century or in-the-box mixing, um, that collectively we might be able to um, persuade or put some pressure on Avid to bring in some of these advances and you know that would transform my mixing work because I use Pro Tools all the time and at the moment I find that if it's possible for me to uh, work in Logic, I'll move everything from a Pro Tools session a client gives me over to Logic for lots of reasons and that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, and as I said, if it's a, an album and I'm working on it for a few days or a week, I mean the time I'll save in Logic is significant, many hours will be saved and fatigue too and we'll see why all that is. The other reason is that anybody who's um, looking to move up to be more professional in their mixing work and they want to use, they're not using either Logic or Pro Tools, might discount the advantages that might be there for them using Logic for mixing specifically. Uh, and I just think it's worth people understanding what those differences are so they can make the choices. Um, and finally, um, I'm doing this because there might be things I don't know about Pro Tools. I mean, I've been using it for many years, but that doesn't mean I know everything there is to know about it. And somebody might say, oh, you know what? You were saying you can't do this in Pro Tools, but actually you can, and this is how. So I really encourage people to leave things in the comments if I've something I don't know or I've said something that, you know, I've said, oh, Pro Tools can't do this, but actually I'm wrong and it can. Then I'm, I'm hoping people will say something because then I'll learn something from that and that's going to help me in my daily mixing. I and mean, if I learn how to do something faster in Pro Tools, that's great for me. So it's for all those different reasons that I thought I'd have this discussion about um, why I find it so time uh, so time saving working in Logic rather than Pro Tools. So having said all that, um, uh, let's have a look at the first thing.
Okay, so here we are in Logic. And I want to load a plugin. I say I want to load an EQ on the snare here. So here we go. And as you can see, everything is organized in my own way. So getting the EQ is simple. I just think it's a modern EQ, is it a character EQ? That's how I think about them. So I want a modern EQ, just go straight in here. There we go, Pro Q3, very quick. So here we are in Pro Tools. Now in Pro Tools, if I want to load a EQ, say, on the snare, then what I need to do is go into here, and I've got two choices. I can either go into EQ, in which case I'm showing every EQ on my system, which is a massive amount. <coughs> so finding the one I want, if it's down here, is going to be a real palaver. It's not only time consuming, it's tiring. Fatigue over a you know hours and hours a day uh, uh, you know a whole day of mixing and you know get it wrong you don't quite get the right one you know half the time I can't remember the name of the EQ until I see it and in a list this big you know it's easy to get not necessarily confused but it just takes more mental concentration to keep in mind what was I looking for by the time I'm down here is that you know or the other option is to go to you know the manufacturer but then you have a similar kind of problem you know especially if I go to one where there's a lot um, but even if it doesn't have a lot I've got to remember the name of the company that made the plugin and I may well not remember the name of it I can remember the name of the plugin but oh, what company made that um, and again so it's very time consuming very clunky um, and tiring fatiguing over a long day of working so that's, you know, just not in the same league as Logic. I mean, loading plugins is so quick and easy in Logic. Whatever you want, you can organize in any way. I mean, I do it like this, but you could do it in any way you want. I've got a go-to folder just for the plugins that I'm loading kind of constantly. And, you know, you can move them in and out of here and change what's in any of these at any point really quick and easy. Um, so it really, I mean, just getting to something is so quick. So, yeah, there's really no comparison. And in a day, I might save an hour in terms of the time it takes me to load all the plugins in a day's mixing. And over a week, it's a serious amount of time. And that means time is money. If you're mixing professionally, you can save a number of hours in a week. Um, I can, mixing in Logic, just because of the, just because of the plugins. Um, and also the fatigue. It's such a long, tedious job in Pro Tools that you get, at least I, get tired and fatigued. And in Logic, it's just so quick because you know that if you just go to your EQ, modern EQ, it's going to be one of these, you know. It, it's, it's amazing, an amazing difference. So that's um, plug-in loading in Logic. So now, automation in Logic. So let's say I write some automation. So um, I'm going to play this. I'm going to write some automation. So I'm moving this down and bring it back up. So just imagine I'm kind of, you know, writing this in real time and so forth. OK. Now, say I think okay fine but I was a bit late here I really want this section you know I, I did it right but it was basically late it's the kind of thing that happens to me all the time is I do the ride and I think okay that was good at the beginning but I kind of at the end I messed it up I was a bit late on everything I could do it again but you know in logic you can just grab this and just move it so you know, or if you just want to grab any one kind of bit of it here and kind of move it up or down or anything like that, you know, it's all just so quick and easy in either direction. The other thing is if I want to move this, you know, I can hold down shift and it locks the movement to horizontal only, which is such a time saver. Or say I want to move it vertically, you know, I can hold shift and it locks it vertically. So 
fantastically quick and easy, plus the fact that if I get my automation cool tool here, you know, I can I can change the curves here. So say I, you know, say I write a couple of uh, couple of points here, and I just think, well, you know, what I really want is uh, I really want a curve here. So I'm going to get my curve tool here, and you know, I, I want it to do that. Or I wanted to do this, or I wanted to do that. You know, it's just it's so quick and easy to do all this. Yeah, you can kind of ride a fader curve down like that. You could do lots of points in Pro Tools, um, but you know, this is just it's a whole other really level of automation, uh, and it's just so crazily quick and easy to do everything. So, and if I just want to, you know, I just want to grab these two points and just move those, just select them, just shift, click, select, shift, click, select, get rid of those, because I just want that one thing, I can just grab the middle of the line and pull it, you know, and everything about it is just so quick and easy that it's, you know, It's just a so much more advanced feeling than Pro Tools where everything is very clunky and so yeah, automation and logic um, for me is um, really uh, on a different level than, than Pro Tools. So here we are in Pro Tools. Now, say for example, I wanna move this point over to, over to here, okay? Now I can move it over there, but oh, I've moved it a little bit higher than I wanted to. So how do I know it's at the same volume? Well, I can look at the numbers. I can try and line it up visually. But, and then when there's something like volume like this, you know, just a tiny movement means I've moved it quite a bit. It's quite hard to keep it in line, which means a lot of extra RSI type strain on the mouse. I can zoom in obviously, or I can expand this and so forth. But it only improves the, pro the problem marginally. There's no way of restraining this movement when I move it like this. So, you know, with volume, it may not be as crucial, but with certain other plugin parameters, keeping it an exact value can be absolutely crucial. Say for a pitch plugin, for example, but there's lots of other circumstances where that's the case. So it is a, an awful lot of fiddling goes on to keep it, to keep it right. And that's time consuming, because I end up having to do the edit two or three times to get it right instead of just in logic, it would just be once, bang, you're done. You know, it's a big time saver in a mix, you know, where, where every track may have a lot of automation on it. And going and adjusting that automation or simply just writing in automation quickly and being able to adjust that easily and quickly, um, you know, it's just, it's just such a time saver. In a, again, in a day's mixing, um, when you can just manipulate things on that level uh, with that speed and that ease. Um, it's not only a big time saver over, over a day of mixing or a week of mixing, it adds up to a lot, but also it's fatigue. Um, the amount of fatigue that's added when I'm working in Pro Tools because I can't do any of that stuff in Pro Tools. Every, you know, you've got to try to move every point very carefully. Um, you know, it adds up over a day. You get tired quicker. I do. And the other thing I would say is that, say for example, you know, I wanted this to line up exactly with the beginning of, you know, a, dr a drum hit or something, okay? Now, how am I gonna do that? The drum hits up here, okay? Say I, say I make things a bit smaller so I can see them both at the same time, okay? So there's my drum hit. Now, how am I gonna do that? Now, I could create a marker, right? I could create a marker, but without creating a marker, it's really no, you know, I, I can line that up like that to a degree I can see, but there's still a gap there as to exactly where that is. It's all pretty, and look at the way this scrolls, very clunky. Can't scroll it part way up so that I get that drum hit right at the top here, which means it's going to be near impossible to get it precise. And if it was in the middle here, I'm not going to see anything at all. There's no way to line it up. I'd have to scroll this to the top and look for the red line. And it's still pretty, pretty imprecise. You know, it's, 
Yeah, you can do it, but it's 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 clunky and it's it's tricky, and I can't line up unless it's at the very top of the screen. There's there's really no way to line it up, and that's not always convenient or possible to have to always scroll the thing I'm lining to the top. I might want to scroll this line, this one up to here, and the next one I might want to line up to there. I might have another automation laying down here where I want to line up to another one. And yeah, it's doable, but it's just, you've got to scroll every time. I've got to scroll this up and I've got to then try to estimate how close that is to the beginning. Fine in a situation like this, but I was doing something pretty precise. And uh, jumped over out of the way there. I have to scroll horizontally back. It's just all fiddly. So if I wanted to get really precise about something, you know, I'd probably make a marker. And then once you've got the marker there, you've got a line. And then you can really line that up because you can get the marker like, see when you move a marker, you get a line. And that's where you can see precisely what's going on. So that's the solution, but it's not ideal. I mean, again, it doesn't actually cross over here. So if it's trying to line that up, you know, it's, it's far from ideal, but it's, you got something you can work with a bit there, but it's, it's an extra step and it's still not as good as logic in terms of lining up. So I want to move this so that it's starting at a certain note. Now, how do I line that up? Well, it's really easy because you get this vertical line. And if I, if I was trying to line it up with something up here, maybe we're trying to line that up with, with some track higher up. You can line it up with this vertical line and it just makes, it makes life so much quicker and easier than, you know, in Pro Tools there's, you can make a marker, but in Logic, it's just like everything is there ready to be lined up so quick, so easy, so much less messing about, so accurate. And the accuracy means speed, especially when you're doing this kind of thing all day long. Um, another problem is, say I've written some automation here, okay, I've, I've used a fader and I've, I've written some automation, okay, and I've done my pass and I think, okay, it was fine, but I was a bit late when it came here. And I really, this bit should have happened a bit earlier. Well, there's, there's no way I can move this as a block. So that means my only choice is to re-run it again and try to get it right the next time. And my experience with that is that I end up doing multiple passes to try to get something right. And then I end up doing an awful lot of editing if I still haven't got it quite right. You know, because I don't want to have to redo this part because I got that part right. So I can kind of start recording from this point, but it's not as good as running in from the beginning. I end up doing an awful lot of, of editing to try to get it right once I've, once I've done the pass. And in Logic, you can just grab the whole thing and move it over a bit. As far as I know, there is no way of moving things horizontally in Pro Tools. Also, say I, say I, say I had a, uh, I'd written some automation and I thought, okay, what I want to do is I'm going to bring this down here, bring that down here. But I really, I don't want that to be a ramp. I want that to be a concave curve or a, con a convex curve or an S shape because that's what I want the volume to do. Well, really way of doing that, you know, all, all I can really do is, is use a fader or try to draw it in like this, which I can do. But if I didn't get it quite right, you know, how do I change that? I would have to write it in again. I can sit here and kind of do that. And then, whoops, everything seems to be moving here. And then I can try to, you know, you can, you can do that. But it's now difficult to edit this. If I've changed my mind, I'm going to have to get the pencil back. I'm going to have to try it again. And if I want it just a bit, say, say I wanted a bit less, you know, a bit shallower of a curve. Well, I'm going to have to be here doing it again and again. And like, oh, I've made a bit of a jump here. And it's all a mess. In Logic, all these things are just built in to your automation tools. So um, all kinds of, um, all kinds of issues here. Um, now I can just grab this here. Why is that not working? 
Yeah, this is this is another thing that drives me a bit mad about Pro Tools is that um, it's kind of buggy. So it should be that I can say I've got a bunch of points here, and I you know I again I want to bring say say I say I want to bring this central section down. For some reason, it's not letting me do that. Now, why is that? I couldn't tell you, but it's it won't let me bring them down. Normally, it does. I can just grab it here, I can hold down Alt and it turns, turns into a, a different tool. Um, but for some odd reason, it's not letting me do that. Okay, so now, for some reason it wasn't working on that track, but it is working on this one. Uh, again, I do find that Pro Tools is kind of buggy, uh, which is another, th which I don't have any problems like that with Logic, is extremely solid. Uh, with Pro Tools, I find, um, it's buggy um, in lots of little ways. For example, you saw down there I couldn't get this selection to cause a nodes, automation nodes. I, I couldn't edit an existing one. I didn't get that little thing happening up there. That's the kind of stuff that happens. Now here's another thing. If I select here and I hold down Alt, I can, I can move that like this. But that doesn't always work. That's the weird thing. And if, if I don't have a selection, it moves the whole thing. But sometimes, even without the selection, it moves that bit in the middle. So again, it's all a bit of a kludge, or all a bit buggy. Um, the other problem is that, say I've got a complex animation. I mean, this is easy. But, you know, if it's like this, which it so often is, it's not necessarily that easy to select the right bits in order to move up and down. Um, whereas, you know, in Logic, you can just click select the nodes you want to move, and you can move any set of nodes. So, and you can move them both ways. So, um, that's automation and all the problems with automation um, in Pro Tools. One of the amazing things about Logic that, again, Pro Tools doesn't have is that in Pro Tools, you have to, every time you want to automate a plugin, <clears throat> you've got to go in and tell it which parameters you want to automate. In Logic, it's just already right there. So just in here, I've got all my different uh, parameters here. Uh, I want to automate, say, the attack of this. And there it is. And say, I want to uh, automate another one. What's great is that it's a different color. Again, lining up things, easy, because you've got that vertical line. And I can just keep adding as many as I want here. So I don't need to worry about adding them in, in the plugin. So you can see the color thing really, I find really, really helps because you can so much quicker and easier, you can see what's going on. You can't, I mean, in Pro Tools, you know, it's all the same color, which makes it easy to get confused and click on the wrong one. Whereas in Logic, it's dead easy to um, differentiate them and to line things up. So that's, that's a big one. Now, I've talked to a bunch of Pro Tool users about these issues and nobody has been able to come up with any solutions. That just seems to be the way Pro Tools is. But maybe there's somebody out there that knows something I and these other people don't know and can tell me how to do this. But I've, I have scoured YouTube for tutorials over years and I've not found solutions to these problems uh, that don't require you know just as much work. Just, it's just another clunky way of doing the same thing. Um, I've not found anything that gets me anywhere near the speed and accuracy of editing uh, that you get in Logic. So that's our automation. So editing in Pro Tools. Say I want to line up this bass with, with that drum, okay? So first of all, I can't really see whether it's lined up. So I click here and I get a red line here but it stays with my cursor, so not really very easy. And there is a blinking line here with that insertion point, but I can't really see whether that lines up. 
And because the scrolling is very clunky in Pro Tools, whereas in Logic it's smooth and you can smoothly roll it right up to exactly what point you want, in Pro Tools it just kind of jumps, which I find a real pain anyway. I'm always overshooting the mark. Um, I don't know why they haven't improved that in the past decade, but they haven't. Um, so, difficult. So, s say I want, want to line that up. So I grab that and I think, okay, I can move it. And like Logic, you get kind of a, a nice um, transparent overlay here, which allows you to line it up that way, and that's really useful. But to line it up with another track, not so easy. I can't really see if that's lined up. So, you know, you can make a marker. So let me just zoom in a bit here. I could make a marker there and get that exactly right there. And that gives me a line that I can line up to. Uh, it's, it's a workaround, let's put it that way. Um, but it's an extra step and it still doesn't cross over here. Unfortunately, you can't see it across there. But I mean, as long as I've lined it up right to begin with, that's okay. And it gives you a line all the way up and down while you're making the marker, moving the marker. I don't know why you can't get that when you're moving apart. It would make life so much easier. You know, it's a bunch of extra clicks and you've got a load of markers all over the place you've got to get rid of. And it's far from ideal. Again, it's, it's clunky, time consuming. So editing in Logic. So I just want to cut this. I just right click and I, I've got my scissors here. And if I, you know, hold on command, I've got my selection tool here, which will, which I can use to, to cut with if I like. Uh, so I've done a cut here and I want to, I want to move this. I've got this vertical line going up the screen. See that white vertical line. That means if I want to line this base, note up with the beginning of the drums there it's just so easy you know even if it was a track you know way up here somewhere really easy to line it up so it's just it's a lot quicker and a lot more accurate so yeah super great for all that kind of thing for all that kind of editing work so that's editing in logic So now let's move on to fades. Now with uh, Pro Tools, if I want to make a fade, then I, I, I select, but where I can drag, um, you know, or I can select and make a fade that way. Editing, it's not quite so easy. Now here, I, 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 the cursor is, is not, it's not turning into the edit thing. I'm gonna have to zoom in to get that to happen. Uh, and now I can, I can edit that. What I like about this is that in Pro Tools, you see a change in the waveform as you change a fade or a crossfade, and that's, that's nice, and you don't have that in Logic, and I like that about Pro Tools. But honestly, it's icing on the cake. The real bread and butter is the actual editing, and this zooming in and out all the time um, is a bit of a pain. In Logic, it's just not necessary to do that. Also in Logic, any fade you have, and if I want to edit that, I can double click on it and you know I can edit the shape and so forth but if I want to change the width of it I mean in logic all I have to do is click anywhere on the region on the the clip and over here in the inspector I can I got all the information about the fades at both ends of the clip the curve of the fade um, which is continually variable um, the, the distance of the fade it's all there so there's no need to zoom in and out or anything like that. Now, if I have, let me get rid of these fades here. Say if I have a cross fade, that's fine. But if I want to adjust that cross fade, again, you know, I can change the, the curve and things. But in Logic, as soon as I do a cross fade, first of all, I don't have to have a dialogue comment box coming up and, and then closing it again. It just, you drag across with, the, with a, a modifier key and you get the crossfade. Um, and I can grab this whole thing and move it. And I can adjust my fades like totally quickly and easily. I mean, the whole thing, the center of the fade can be adjusted all like really quickly and, and easily. It's so much quicker and easier than than, um, 
then in Pro Tools. In the inspector, I can I got all the information about the fades at both ends of the clip. So you know the curve is there, and the f everything is is can can be controlled numerically if you want it to be. Um, and it's just so quick and easy to just do it right in place. People go on about the fact that you can select multiple clips and and do fades, cross fades, or, or, or start and end fades and all of them, but you can do that in Logic too. Logic has an awful lot of other tools that Pro Tools doesn't have as well, manipulation tools, and again, you can have all of those on key commands. Uh, again, I think, you know, Pro Tools editing is, is excellent and its fades are all excellent, but Logic is just even better. It's quicker, it's more accurate, it's more flexible, uh, time-saving stuff, basically, over a long day of mixing or a long day of editing. The other big thing in Logic that's a massive, massive time saver is the ability to save plugin chains. So, for example, I've got uh, a preset, a bunch of preset reverbs for snares, and I can go in here and again, you can organize this any way you want. You know, I've organized this a certain way. Um, I can go back to previous albums and find certain things that I've done on previous albums. Uh, I think, oh, there was a, that was that snare reverb I used in that album last year. You know, I, I keep all that in here. Now, of course, you could import that as a session data in, in Pro Tools or in Logic. You have all that in Logic too. It's pretty much exactly the same, the session import in Logic in terms of importing channels and, and things, but it's so much quicker to do it this way. I can just go straight to reverbs, uh, drums and, and I've got my my go-to drum reverbs right there which aren't necessarily just you know it's it's not you know you, you've got your your channel strip you know your sorry your, your plug-in uh, presets and so forth but it's beyond that because that you know that only saves that one plug-in setting but um, in Logic, you can save a whole chain. So that reverb sound might not just be that reverb, it might be that reverb plus an EQ, or it might be a compressor in that reverb, or I might have a bunch, like in this case, it, this, this one loads a whole set of reverbs that are my go-to snare reverb. So I've got a choice automatically loaded of a bunch of reverbs I know sound great on snare. And I can think, oh, okay, let's try this one. Okay, no, I think that's gonna be the one. You know, it's just setting up a mix is so quick and easy. It's quicker than doing session import, I find. Uh, it's less fiddly because I don't necessarily want to import the entire session. I don't have to go through, untick everything and just tick, you know, the things I want. And uh, it, you're scrolling down this little list with lots of little scroll. It takes ages and it, it's tiring and time consuming. here I can just go straight for it okay you know straight into here where's that session you know let's go to clients and, and so forth and and pull in that just that drum channel real quick and easy so that's a big time saver um, it's to the point of being kind of a game changer another one is um, you can copy a whole channel strip and paste it onto another channel strip that's super useful. You can reset the channel strip. Um, so really uh, ultra fast, ultra, ultra useful. The way solos work in Logic, I find so much easier. You don't have to worry about so having to solo save everything all the time and then unsolo save one way and re-solo save. In Logic, I, I want to solo a an aux, you know, a subgroup. I just have to solo the subgroup and it automatically solos everything that feeds into it.
really quick and easy. It's just smart. It knows, always knows what you want. But if you want something different, you can always solo save things in another way if you want to. But its default is what you normally want nine times out of ten. So it's a lot quicker and easier than having to solo safe everything and unsolo safe things constantly, which is what I'm always doing in Pro Tools. The rest of the mixer in Logic works pretty much the same way as, as in Pro Tools in terms of uh, it's not set out exactly the same way, but it's really similar. You know, you've, you've got your mute and solo. Like in Pro Tools, the mixer is totally customizable. Um, you can choose um, to have whatever you want or don't want showing up. And that's about the same in both. Things are laid out pretty similarly. You've got your output to wherever it might be going, physical outputs, um, buses, and so forth, oxes, all that sort of thing. Um, you can expand this and, ha and have the name as big, you know, bigger if you want. Um, your inputs are here. Sends are here. It's, it's really um, very similar in in, in pretty much every way to, to Pro Tools and just as flexible. You know, your read-write modes are here. Um, yeah, I don't find a big difference in terms of working with the mixers. I find them incredibly similar and uh, that I don't find any problems in Pro Tools. Uh, it, it works, you know, very similar and I can just switch straight over and it's not a problem. Organization is a big one in in logic i can just put all of these into a into a, what logic calls a track stack uh, a summing folder and there we are they're all tucked away in there and that is such a space saver when you're working on a big mix and there it is and on that summing thing i can put effects and it does the same thing in the mixer collapses all up there opens up there that's a big one that saves a lot of time um, logic's take folders i think is for another video it's got it's got um playlists now just like pro tools but it also has, for a long time has had uh, take folders which are really useful for comping which um, pro tools doesn't really have anything like that it's got playlists but they're not they're not the same thing um, so yeah this organizational thing is just great you can also just put things into a folder which is another kind of way of organizing things where things are just like you get a mini arrange window inside that folder um, I don't tend to use that so much for organizing but if I've got a bunch of takes I don't want but I don't want to get rid of them I chuck them into a folder like that and so uh, yeah that's Huge time saver, that organizational ability. Now, one of the things I like about Logic is its groups. They work a lot like Pro Tools. You can get them here or you can, you can access them in, in the side channel here if you like. Um, when this is closed, they'll appear here. I like them in a floating window because it's just easy to grab hold them and have them around. But they're always available. But what I like about them is that all the different things that you can control with a group are all um, instantly accessible at all times. So, you know, it's not like Pro Tools where every time you want to change, you think, okay, I don't want my group controlling the volume or I don't want it controlling the mutes or whatever it might be. Um, in Pro Tools, you've got to edit the group, go in there, remove or add the things that you want to remove or add and then click close it's a big palaver whereas just here it's just always there so on the fly as you're editing i can turn things off and on which i'm constantly doing it's just a big time saver in pro tools you've got this really complicated thing of these various buttons up here which even after using pro tools for many more years than i can count i still get confused
and it's very easy if you've got the button selected wrong to lose your selection and lose that carefully you know selected loop that you've made um, which is a real pain logic the looping is completely separate it's just it's just all up here and it doesn't matter it's totally separate from any kind of selection that you do down here um, and it's great because this will automatically bounce out there of course you can use markers as well you've got markers it automatically will loop you can turn that off of course but you know by default that's a, that's a loop um, you can do this which means that you'll skip over that as it plays through so if I play through here you'll see when it gets to that it just jumps past it so say you're experimenting with an arrangement and you think well or even an edit and you think well what happened if I just cut that bit out what would that sound like dead quick and simple to do all that sort of thing so yeah the the looping tools and arrangement tools I find more advanced, quicker and easier in, in Logic. Um, the other big advantage about Logic is CPU usage. So, you know, if I've got a lot of plugins and I've got like a high res arrangement as more and more things are and are going to be in the future, 88.2 and 96 kilohertz, you know, that uses up your CPU a lot quicker when you've got a lot of plugins. Of course, it sounds cleaner too because anti-lazing isn't a problem when you've got 88.2 and 96, at which, where it is a problem at 44.1 and 48. A lazing is a serious problem with plugins that add harmonics, um, unless they've got oversampling, and most of them don't, or a lot of them don't, even from the from the big manufacturers. But as soon as you go up to 88.2 or 96, the lazing is out of the audible spectrum, and so, you know. Things are a lot cleaner and more open, and um, the depth, the 3D depth is better. Um, a lazing tends to collapse the stereo image as, as well as add kind of nasty distortion. So mixing in high res gives you a better result purely for that reason, not because of the fact that it's uh, representing frequencies outside of the human hearing, but just because it deals with the lazing with plugins a lot better but it also taxes your CPU a lot more and I find that Logic can run uh, about a third as many plugins again as Pro Tools before you hit the CPU limit uh, and it's a lot more forgiving in, in other ways with the CPU um, so yeah it's a, again it's a big time saver I don't have to freeze as often I don't have to worry about plugin management as well Plus Logic, Log, Logic has a bunch of strategies you can use to spread it across the CPU that you don't get access to in Pro Tools. So yeah, you can go way further um, with plugins significantly. In fact, I almost never hit the CPU limit in Logic, whereas in Pro Tools, I hit it pretty quick. And it's always then a balancing act of how much time can I spend freezing things. The other problem with Pro Tools with freezing is that it freezes the entire song and so does logic but this is where this is a big difference in time and that is that in logic you can determine where the end of the song is so you know I do a lot of stuff where things are recorded in one long session in jazz you get that a lot people might do two or three takes and they do it all in one long session and then they later listen back and choose which take they want or maybe they even record the entire you know, the entire, entire recording session in one long Pro Tools session. And it's, you know, it's 30 minutes longer, an hour long or whatever. And you've got a track in the middle and, you know, you want to freeze something like that. You, you know, it takes forever to freeze that entire thing. In Pro Tools, even if you cut out the rest of the tracks, you just choose the one you want and you erase the rest and save it as a separate session it still keeps the track, the song, the session as long as the original recording session was and there's no way to change that. So like in a situation like this you can see how long this is. So there had been other things recorded here which I didn't want, which I, I got rid of. 
But what's so great in Logic is you can just grab this and just move it. So, you know, I can just simply shorten this session to whatever I need. And when I freeze, it just freezes it very quick and easy. In Pro Tools, it would have to freeze the entire hour or half an hour or however long that recording session was, even if I've gotten rid of everything in here. So freezing becomes a very long, lengthy process. And in Logic, you know, it's as quick as it can be for the length of your recording. So really a fantastic, again, huge time-saving difference. Um, so there's that, there's a CPU, um, there's a freezing. Now, lot, now Pro Tools does have the advantage of being able to freeze Oxus, and Logic can't do that. And that's, Pro Tools 12 brought that in, and that, that is great. And I wish Logic had that, and I really hope that Apple bring that in in the next version of Logic. But that aside, I don't find I need to use that very often in Logic anyway, because the CPU usage is just so great. Um, so yeah, CPU uh, and freeze length, two big ones. Sometimes the uh, delay compensation stops working in weird ways just on certain tracks and the it'll be working and then it'll stop working and people say oh maybe your plugin isn't reporting the delay compensation but this is a plugin that this is something where it's been working fine without any changes of any plugins and then the whole session just starts to kind of fall apart timing wise um, that is an issue I've had a lot of trouble with um, whereas logic is rock solid timing wise I've never had any timing issues uh, or delay compensation issues with Logic. But with um, Pro Tools, I've had rather a lot of issues like that. Going back to here, of course, this is all completely customizable. What you have up here in Logic, every bit of this is customizable. What you have in here, what you have up here, uh, it's far more customizable. You can really tailor it to be exactly how you want it to be. Um, don't need to have that, you can have that, which you can do a lot of that in Pro Tools, but it's not really not anything like as flexible, uh, which again, not a game changer, it's just really useful. Um, and you know, you can get your editing here, you can have your mixer here, showing down here, again, really great for a laptop, um, you know, and you can get editing down here everything can be down here MIDI editing can be down here now I won't even start on the MIDI editing for logic it's just it's just head and shoulders above Pro Tools uh, in many ways but I'm, I'm not going to bother going into that now another thing I like again this is a minor thing but the scrolling is so smooth in logic it's not this clunky click 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 where you've gone too far oh I've clicked one too many I've lost that it's just totally smooth and, and really nice and easy and smooth there are other things you can have a secondary uh, you've got the uh, arrangement um, here as well as markers so you can you can like have separate markers just for your arrangement above here which is useful um, um, and I think that pretty much covers it